For this test drive, I expected a lumbering beast with the handling of a bulldozer. Instead, I got this. And what a surprise. Hi, I am Jeremy Cato, and this is CatoCarGuy.com. Thanks for watching, and if you have not already, please subscribe. What we have here is the Land Rover Defender SUV. This is the eight passenger version in first edition form, about $101,000 to start. Well, what's surprising here isn't that it's mutt and rut ready. As you can see, I've been testing that part. What really surprised me is how fun this thing is to drive. Credit the standard air suspension and some obviously smart body and suspension engineering. All this is no small matter. As you can see, this is a hulking monster of an SUV, yet it has the driving responses of a rig half its size, and that's pretty shocking. I mean, look how big it is. I walked from tail to tip, took me seven big strides. Seven big strides. Oh, it's big. The Defender seats eight, as I said, eight people. And it weighs a staggering 2,500 kilograms or 5,500 pounds. It's so big and burly. Well, Land Rover makes an ambulance version of it so you can stuff stretchers in the back. Despite all that bulk, this big rig can leap from zero to 100 kilometers an hour in about six and a half, 6.6 .6 seconds. Yikes, look at the size of this thing. Six and a half seconds, zero to 100? You've gotta be kidding. Like all Defenders introduced since the big remake of a couple of years back, my top line Defender 130 tester came with a modern three liter inline six cylinder engine. Horsepower, 395, and there is a 48 volt mild hybrid system. The mild hybrid system gives the Defender a jolt of go power without the need of a monstrous gas swilling V8 engine. Although one is available, a ZF eight speed automatic transmission is standard and it's a gem. Smooth and quiet and very smart. The gear changes are seamless. This rig is also loaded up with all sorts of driver assist technologies to help you get through anything and save you from yourself if you get over your head. The all-wheel drive Land Rover's terrain response system allows you to dial up various powertrain and standard suspension responses to get through and across any kind of surface imaginable. The kit in my tester included an electronic active differential with brake-based torque vectoring to help you manage tight corners at higher speeds in a rig that is just shy of six feet tall or 197 centimeters. As I said, this Defender is just shy of 18 feet long, but with this spare poking out the back, it's a full seven paces tail to tip. Sure, the Defender is a load, but it doesn't feel like a big heavy load from behind the wheel. It feels refined and balanced, predictable and manageable. Sure, it's a bit much as a grocery getter, but not frightening. Not unless you're ducking into an underground parkade, worried about chopping off the lid. And if you're crossing the Serengeti to get your supplies, well, the off-road abilities are legendary. Now, let me just pull back for a second and talk about pricing. The very most basic version of the Defender lists for $93,000 plus fees and taxes. I spec'd out a possible purchase Defender with a bunch of stuff I might want, and the tally came to $116,000. And you can spend more if you want to. Go to the online configurator, start ticking boxes, and you can get this baby up to $130,000 or more. As for gizmos, the infotainment screen is undersized. The software is very easy to manage, intuitive. There is a ballroom of space inside. That third row, in fact, is functional, spacious enough for adults. The tricky bit is that to provide that space, there is a 149 centimeter rear overhang. 
For you bushwhackers, this impacts off-roading and the departure angle is compromised too. Ground clearance is 29 centimeters. The suspension articulates up to 43 centimeters, which is a big deal. You are probably thinking this monster costs a fortune to keep running. Well, it might not be as much as you think. You can expect to get something like 12 to 13 liters per 100 kilometers. One thing I hate is the view rearward. Back there, well, there are six headrests to contend with, and hanging off the back door is a full-size spare. The back door opens refrigerator style, which really makes loading much, much easier. On top of that, there are controls in the cargo area that allow you to raise and lower the Defender using the air suspension. Clever and useful. Now for a few words about design, about the exterior styling. As you can see, well, there are some hints here that remind you of the original Defender from decades ago, but this is all very modern, very smoothed out, very cool. Here inside, exposed rivets, various accents, some pretty cool ambient lighting. All of these things create a very, very welcoming environment, and the materials certainly are good. These seats, absolutely superb. You could go right across the Sahara and not miss a beat and never suffer a backache. There is lots of storage, a convenient wireless charger, and the wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is built into Land Rover's Pivo Pro infotainment system. It's all excellent. What's wrong? Well, that undersized screen and the layout of controls makes it easy to hit the wrong button. Not good. I do worry about Land Rover's sketchy quality. The results of third-party research, not good at all. And because the base version is so extraordinarily well-equipped, I'd skip all the options and extras, and you've got yourself a pretty good value. Thanks for watching. I'm Jeremy Cato. This is CatoCarGuy.com. We'll see you next time. And if you have not already, please subscribe.